And now, the survival show that once survived, making 25 episodes with no pants on. In this I to rage summer short, we quickly discuss some basic preps for hurricane season. Howdy and welcome to In the Rabbit Holes Urban Survival Podcast. This is episode number 261. I'm your host, Aaron, and you are in the rabbit hole. Safe and sound. If you're new, ITRH does short episodes during the summer about every two weeks, tend to be five, sometimes 15 minutes long, hence the name Summer Shorts. However, the next episode after this one will be out in three weeks, and then three weeks after that, we'll start the next season of ITRH, September 10th, and that'll be full-length episodes, which are usually about 30 minutes if you're new here, sometimes 45 if we're feeling particularly chatty. One more thing, I am behind on public listener emails by a few weeks. If you've emailed recently, know that I did receive it. I'm not intentionally ignoring you. I've just been incredibly busy wrapping up the summer. I will respond soon. With that out of the way, let's get into hurricanes. Here's the thing about hurricanes. The time to think about them and prepare for them was long before they happened. This episode is really a reminder for some and a gentle nudge to those of you who might live in the areas and experience them and haven't done anything to prepare for them. We'll break this short into two parts. First will be the simple to-do list. The second will be a short list of things to have on hand. Neither will be exhaustive. This is a short. So, I encourage you to do some more reading using the links provided with this episode. First things first, there is an excellent one-liner which came out a few years back. Turn around and don't drown. It's kind of corny, but it's pretty perfect. Houston, where I live, is prone to flooding, yearly and usually several times a year, in fact. Lots of cars get stuck in high water and people die every year because of this. This is generally due to inexperience with flooding or hubris. There are a few things people should understand. Your vehicle is not amphibious. Water depth is difficult to gauge from inside a vehicle accurately. Sinkholes can open up where water is pooling and you can't see them. It takes less than a few inches of fast moving water to carry your vehicle away, and water is usually moving much faster than you think it is. The best way to avoid all this is to plan ahead and be where you're supposed to be when you need to be there before the flooding starts. Then stay home and off the darn roads. Know your evacuation routes. These should be both published and non-published routes that you develop yourself. The time to get out of a hurricane's way is at least two days before landfall. If you do it the day before, or worse yet, a few hours before, you risk getting caught in a massive traffic jam and fuel shortages. There was a lot of controversy last year when Houston's mayor didn't call for large-scale evacuations when we knew Harvey was going to hit us. Instead, they only called for evacuations of small, specific areas. In my opinion, this was the correct answer because it helped the city avoid issues we'd seen in the past where I-10, or Interstate 10, was completely jammed up, out of fuel, and then people started stalling, and it was a massive issue. Once we knew the hurricane would land on us, it was too late to move massive amounts of people anyway. This is the trouble with spaghetti models. You don't know what's going to happen for sure till the last minute. If you can leave, do it. You will likely not be able to do much in the way of saving things if your house gets flooded anyway. You're better off protecting yourself and your family. Fill your gas tanks when you hear news of a hurricane anywhere near you. Then keep it filled. During the storm, stay away from windows as best as you can. Usually this is in interior rooms with limited windows. There's probably no room in your home without any windows except maybe a bathroom. During and immediately after the storm, use text messages and social media, if you must, instead of phone calls to communicate with people. This helps keep the strain off the cell system, and your messages are more likely to get through during and after a hurricane, because there's usually some damage to the cell network, if not a lot of damage to the network. Have your insurance information handy and be one of the first people to call as soon as you can after the storm if you have damage. We live on the water. My neighbor's house is a few feet lower than mine. 
his house got flooded and he was on the phone as quickly as possible after the storm. Come to think of it, the fool may have actually been standing in water calling the insurance. He, but he was one of the first people in town to have an adjuster come out, cut a check, and restoration work started on his home almost immediately. And that also helped because there were, in quick order, hardly any contracts to be had. These things were a pain for most people. Next thing, sit down, discuss, and run through all your plans with your spouse, life partner, or whatever. Do it now. Ensure that they know the plan and are part of its creation. You will get a lot less questioning and pushback when it's time to enact any of those plans. Because guess what? They'll know them already and they will have been part of the creation of those plans. So it makes life a lot easier. If your home begins to flood, do not go to the attic unless it has an emergency hatch installed. These are usually a specialty item. This is an excellent way to get yourself trapped if you go up there. Things to have. Put your non-super apocalypse bug out bag together. It should include the basics and copies of essential documents and sealed plastic bags. One of the major items to keep in this packet is a deed to your home. Some areas require these to get back in after the storm passes, especially if an evacuation has already been called. We see this often in Galveston Island. Have basic kits and plan for meeting your needs for up to seven days without power at a minimum. Usually the websites say 72 hours. That's rarely enough. Seven days. Put together blackout kits for your home. These should be in dry boxes. And they should include a small lantern, a flashlight, and batteries. Don't store the batteries in the flashlight. A first aid kit. A written copy of emergency and essential phone numbers in a sealed plastic bag. A charging cable for your phone. A backup battery for your phone. Make sure it's fully charged before you put it in there a signal mirror, and whistle. Yes, in case you end up on the roof needing to signal for help. Other items of interest. A weather radio, a small battery-powered fan, inflatable life vests. Another good item is a small portable generator. Make sure you keep it outside, don't run it inside, and away from open windows. And that's what I think about that, damn it. If you're watching this on YouTube, be sure to do all the YouTube stuff. Like this video, subscribe, and slap that bell around because bananas are yellow. If you're listening to the actual podcast, don't merely pick at the episodes, you weirdo. Make sure you are subscribed. Show notes, resources, and links to everything mentioned in this episode can be found by going to in the rabbit hole.com slash E261. With that, we wrap up episode number. 261 from the Lone Star State. Till next time, stay safe and sound. <laughs>